the seminar today is on significant changes in ac 722 we are trying to cover the very extensive changes from ASC 716 to 22 in 10 different web seminars going into October. Uh, in part one last week, we covered chapters uh, one through five. Chapter six is on tsunami loads that we will do quite a bit later. I, I have asked uh, uh, Ian Professor Ian Robertson of the University of Hawaii to do that segment for us. Uh, today's second segment is on Chapter 7, Snow Loads. We do not have time to cover rain loads. So this slide, <laughs> I, I now that I notice it, I should have corrected it. So it should be Chapter 7, Snow Loads, no rain loads today snow loads themselves will take us an hour and a half, I, I expect. As mentioned, the changes are from AC 716 to the left to AC 722 to the right. The, the outward appearance of the two are exactly the same, but <laughs> the, the interior is quite different. There are a lot of changes. The way we have organized this particular web seminar is to highlight what the major changes are, then talk about the major changes, what we consider to be the major changes, and then uh, after that, we will talk about other changes. Okay. So the first and maybe the foremost change is changes in map ground snow load values that everybody would be interested in. Then revised values of the thermal factor C sub T, uh, which takes us from the ground snow load to flat roof snow load to account for modern roof insulation. Then a new winter wind parameter for determining drift height uh, number four, revisions in determination of windward drift, uh, then added commentary to provide guidance on capture walls to prevent snow drift from a taller structure to an adjacent shorter structure. The change is in the commentary. Normally, we do not go into the commentary, but we believe that this is a pretty important item that most of you would be interested in. Uh, new mapped. Uh, so change number one, the, the new mapped ground snow load values. Uh, so let, let, us, let us get into that. So we have new mapped ground snow load values that are based on updated national ground snow load data set. So the, 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 the emphasis here is updated. Okay? So the maps are based on updated national ground snow load data set. Four separate maps. You, you know that until AC 716, we had one ground snow load map. Now we have four separate maps for reliability targeted ground snow load values for risk categories one through four. So one map for risk category one, a second map for risk category two, a third map for risk category three, and a fourth map for risk category four. There is an additional new 20 year mean recurrence interval or 20 year return period ground snow load map for serviceability analysis. <laughs> this one, that, as you will see later, is a bit problematic, but, but I'll, I'll come to that later. <clears throat> the old ground snow load map was based on statistical analysis using National Weather Service snowfall data from 52 to 92. So, so you, you see that it's kind of old. MAP was updated with additional information in 1995. That was the last time, 1995 is, is 28 years ago. 
and and the maps that were updated in 1995 remained essentially unchanged since that time. 